Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner to Corner with I'm Tom you, Vassell. I'm Rado. It looks like you almost forgot the name of the show. Yeah, I, I don't. I was about to say look back, and I'm like, this isn't look back, and I don't even know why that would have come in my head. But I think maybe because we were just before we went live, we were talking about games. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. So, what was I doing three, five, and ten years ago? I have no idea. But so you're on your own with that. Yeah, it is amazing how many uh, games you can forget pretty quickly. <laughs> Folks, Corner to Corner today is sponsored by Nerd Games, or specifically Climate Crisis. This is a game that's on Kickstarter. It just launched yesterday. Um, and there's a contest going, so you can win a game and have it before Rado does. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> um, actually, the interesting thing about this game, or one of many interesting things, is that if you win this game, it's going to be shipped out to you November this year, which is a far cry from most Kickstarters. Um, I have been keeping track of my Kickstarters, and most of them aren't coming anytime soon. So uh, they're giving out uh, two copies of the game. All you have to do is email us at contest at dicetower.com. Make sure it's dicetower.com. If you email Rado, you won't, he won't be entered. Email us <laughs> at contest at dicetower.com. We're going to pick two winners, but to enter this, you need to put in the uh, email header the word climate, and then answer the following question. Name two possible impacts from climate change. Now, if you're like, well, I don't know, then fortunately on their Kickstarter page, you can find that info out. They actually list them there. This is a cooperative board game for four to six players where you and your team are trying to solve a climate crisis. Uh, the games last just over an hour. And what's one of the things they want to point out was that all the stuff that the game's made out of, there's no plastic, it's all sustainable manufacturing with all the parts recyclable that is awesome as you can tell from my shirt i am very pro the subject matter of this game and it breaks my heart tom that it requires at least four players well so, we, we were talking about the other day we said that you could play two of the players and then you could play the other two and pretend they're both jen and jenette <laughs> there you so, go um, but folks, if you're watching this, so this is going to be open for a week, this contest, if you're watching this a little bit later, to August 17th. So plenty of time to enter this contest. So check it out. And um, there you go. Yeah. And if you want to know more about the project itself, literally just this second, I added a link to the Kickstarter page down in the show notes of this episode. Although I think you'll have to refresh your page to see. True. That. If you're watching it live, you'll have to refresh. If you're coming in later, you're fine. Yep. So corner to corner, it's uh, been a, it's been two weeks, but it seems like shorter period of time, obviously. Um, but we're glad to be back here talking about games. The I um, you literally called me 15 minutes ago and said, "Hey, you haven't made the uh, video on your channel yet." And I'm like, "What? We're not doing this till next week? What are you talking about?" And I had you thinking for a second that I was right. But if you know my show, folks, you know I'm the one who tends to make goofs. And then there was a mad cash, a madcap dash to get this up and live. And yet here we are, like the seasoned professionals that we are. This is why I have a very detailed schedule and people who remind me of such things um, <laughs> that these things go off here. Alexa did not remind me. For we, shame, Alexa. I just, I just installed Alexa here at the office. Oh, Alexa, cancel. Sorry. I just installed Alexa here at the office, and it works great. The problem is it uses my Amazon account uh, to use Alexa. Oh. So when my wife announces dinner at the house, the you can hear it here in the studio also. And the other oh, I day, thought that was going to be more that Roy could say, Hey, Alex, go on ahead and buy this $200 uh, graphic novel out of print. Shut up. Don't. <laughs> don't give him that idea. I actually never ordered anything uh through the voice, the voice part of it. I guess mm. I, I, I want to see the actual thing. I guess I could do a reorder, maybe. Yep, there you go. But I have not done a, an order one. So what's on the table in front of you? It's a small game. Yes, it's a, it's a small game. This is Biblios Quills and Parchments. This, or you could also call it Biblios the Roll and Write game from Steve Finn, one of my favorite designers. I always call him the king of the fillers. And he's actually going on Kickstarter later this month with four games. And this is one of them. So I was sitting down to do some filming for it today. This one, Mining Colony, uh, Butterfly Garden, and uh, Nanga Parbat. Uh, four Wait, what's very, that last very... one called? Nanga Parbat. 
which is the name of a famous mountain, I guess. And oh, it's okay. uh, it's got three mountains on the board. Uh, also a very cool game. So I'm going to be covering these because I pretty much love all of his games. And But Biblios has always been his masterpiece. Um, and it's weird. He did another dice Biblios dice game a few years ago. But that was really a very different game with the Biblios title. This is Biblios turned into a dice game with the two different phases and, you know, the first gathering all your stuff, but then the second half auctioning, um, but with dice instead of cards. And, yeah, we really enjoyed it. All right. Well, looking forward to that. All right, folks, every week or every time, I'm sorry, every time we do this, we take a look at a board game mechanism. And I'm actually going to have to add myself in here. And then you, mm -hmm. and then that's my email. Let's go to here. All what right. is happening, Tom? It's it's the professionalism. It's exactly it's, it's affecting us all. Um, all on display. Alrighty. So today we're looking at chaining. As we go through the mechanisms of board game geek in a series which will last us years, and I'm not kidding. At this rate. Yeah. Um, chaining. So chaining is a game where the pieces are stationary, but you build them out in chains. It says, I love it, it says, this can give a dynamic sense of motion to the game, even though the pieces do not move. Sure. <laughs> I, someday you are going to have... Um, someday Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Engelstein's going to pop up and be like... <laughs> um, okay, so I get what they're trying to say here. In fact... Uh, when I was explaining this to Rado before we started, he mentioned yep. the number two game here, which is Through the Desert. And yep. in fact, the top two games here, Kingdom Building and Through the Desert, this is the case of those. You're just building uh, different... Um, pieces. Pieces Tokens. across the thing. It's it's kind of like route building, like uh, you know an 18XX or uh, you know, Railways of the World, but with pieces instead of tiles. I mean, I never would have thought. I always kind of thought of these as just route builders, but without tiles. But I guess it does have kind of a different feel to it. it it's, it's a bit more organic. You're not limited by whatever, like, the little train line says you have to do. You can go off in any particular direction. Um, plus, I mean, everybody loves those camels. I know you love those camels. I do. In, in fact, the, uh, I keep meaning to make a top ten list of games that look like pieces where the pieces look like candy. Yep. Spoiler alert. That would definitely rank high. And um, I love, I love Kingdom Builder. Uh, it, it is a highly regarded game for sure. <laughs> that is a very diplomatic response for sure. Here's the thing, though. I don't, I don't hate Kingdom Builder. I know a lot of people get the impression that I hate it. I've kind of ragged on it a bit, but I don't really hate it. I get what it is. I know why I don't like it, and I know why people do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it. but this... It's weird to me because, once again, this list is sorely lacking because I know I've played many games like this. Now, Stephenson's yeah. Rocket is an interesting one because mm. in this one, you actually are, quote-unquote, moving the trains as you build out these routes slowly, and you can veto where someone else's train goes. I don't know if you've played this one. I played it a long time ago. I um, hate it, it first came out, and I thought, wow, this is really interesting. Boy, not really great for two players. It's not, and it's also probably, if you play with more than two players, I can't imagine you would not think this is too mean for your taste. That's pretty cutthroat, yeah. It is yeah. definitely a mean game. Yeah. Now, one I did not think about here is Medina. Medina's a really interesting one. This is where you're building a city from wooden blocks, and you build them, but they all kind of attach to each other, and you're building this path through the middle um, and roads, and you're building walls, but they all have to attach to each other. So I thought that was interesting. And that's a really cool game. That got didn't that get a second edition from uh, Stronghold? That is what the screen here says. Yes. Oh, is it? Yeah, from your arch nemesis <laughs> or your former arch nemesis. Ah, former. He's retired. I got to uh, find yeah. somebody else now. So you, the job jobs open. If hey, you folks. would like to. <laughs> All right. Let me zoom in here a bit. Um, so then we got. Um, but if Medina counts. Then so does Carcassonne, the city. Because mm. those walls yeah. in Carcassonne, the city, yeah. move around the outside as you build them. Yes, they do. And they expand. In, in, really, in kind of the same way as through the desert. I agree. 
In fact, um, this also mentions Laser Riders, which I might argue Laser Riders is basically just Tron. Yeah. Um, but let me look here. I'm going to look. I know there's a game that Rio Grande just did um, last year, I want to say it is, um, that has this very mechanism in it. It had camels in it. And, um, of course, just searching for Rio Grande is not going to help. I'm going to have to use the advanced search. There you go. And I'm going to. Although I don't to... think uh, they have a category for camels. I don't think no, that's it. No, but I will be able to look here. at games that came out in the last three years from Rio Grande, which can't be That'll too probably. many. That'll probably. Uh, not, that, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. There it is, Caravan. Well, that would make sense. It's about camels. Right. Um, so in this game, I don't know if you've played Caravan. No, I haven't. So in Caravan, you actually have to move these cubes um, from one spot to another spot using camels, but you can only place a camel next to where you have another camel. So you slowly right. place these camels out, and then once you have a line, you go, bloop, I move the cube. All right, now start moving the camels around the board again. So it's, so it's really it's kind like, of fascinating. It's like through the desert, but you actually do something with those camel trains. That's correct. In fact, the yeah. camels have little ridges in them, so you can actually put the cube on their back. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a pretty cool looking game. Uh, there's a few problems with it. I mean, uh, that even though the game that you put the cubes on, the game looks a little dull. It's, you know, real grounded games tend to look that way many times. Um, and it is the same thing over and over, but I, I enjoyed it for what it was, for sure. Hmm. Uh, that's all I have to say about chaining, unless you got some more. <laughs> no, no, I like it. I do I, like it. I, I like I like any game where you're actually building something. Where I mean, it's why I love tile layer so much. You actually have at the end of the game something that I have created. It, you know, it has a slight, you know, cr you know, creative outlet to it. I know I'm not. I'm I'm not actually you know flexing my artistic muscles. I'm just trying to score the most points. But it's just so much more satisfying, especially considering the fact that I play so many abstractish. Oh, I'm just some middle manager in some economic system moving stuff around to have a game where at the end, I mean, through the, that's the most wonderful thing about Through the Desert. I mean, everybody, I think, the first time they play Through the Desert, they end up taking a picture at the end because they think, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And of course, there's five thousands of those pictures out there, but it, you know, it really does scratch a, a wonderful itch. So I got no problem with this being a, uh, uh, a whole entry unto itself because it is, you know, the physicality of it, I think does, I mean, route building, it is a little bit more abstract. You're yeah, you're putting tiles down, but they don't feel like a thing the same way a row of houses or camels or whatever it might be does. I think I would actually be even more specific that chaining in this case, I would, I would be even harsher if I was doing it to where the chain itself had a bit of a moving quality to it. Mm. Um, so, like, for example, someone in the chat mentioned the ants and fast sloths. I don't know if you played fast sloths. Yes, I have. Right. So in the ants, you put those ants out, then you move on them. But then those ants can move other spots. I yep. like that aspect of it. If there was a game where the chain itself could move, that becomes more fascinating to me. Hmm. So, alrighty. Well, that's that. Let's jump to a top five list, folks. Alrighty, you can send us, if you if you want, you can send us uh, a, a topic for a top five. I'll pick four of them, and then Mr. Richard Ham will pick one of those, and we'll give you the definitive, complete, absolutely, most definitely top five of whatever that category is. Hopefully, we will choose wisely and not choose poorly. Ah, uh, where did I just see... Oh, yeah. I was watching some serious show about the Holy Grail. And oh. as, as soon as they like they were putting it in a uh, in a treasure chest, you know, to carry it. And I was like, one of those guys is going to turn old and just end up making a, a pithy quote later on. So. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see here. Um, <laughs> the top five numbers from one to five. Not their best option. Yeah, yeah. Um, ooh, ooh, that's an interesting one. <laughs> I 
<laughs> top right. five goofs on stream. Uh, that would take us too long to figure that one hey, out. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did your um your your fi- your big finale go the other night? Your last uh, chat. Well, that went pretty well. It's you know it's hard to fit that yeah. many people on to talk all at one time, but it's 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 possible. All right, I think I got some here. Oh wait, no, I I need a I need a non-game one. Hang on. Um, that's weird. Some of these, some of these I don't think I could do. Well, you know what? I'm just going to give you three games and one non-game. If you do the non-game, so be it. Hit me. Okay. All right, here's what we got. We have Camel Games. <laughs> we have... I can think of two. Musicals. We have End Game Triggers. And we have designers who need to make more games. So camel games, musicals, end game triggers, and designers who need to make more games. Uh, it is musicals or designers who need to make more games. I love both of those so much. Wow. Why designers who need to make more games. So oh, man. Games about camels. And yes, <laughs> on the other uh, if, if that's a if, if, that, if that's a silent request, I could probably no 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 I'm you know camels they spit um, mm. quote Aladdin oh games designers you need to make more games or musicals I um I, I'm I'm gonna stick to games today let's do designers that need to make more games all right well then I would like to jump in with the number one uh, in this category. Um, yeah. Reiner Knizia. <laughs> <laughs> we just did not see enough from that guy. <laughs> um, no. And now this person's name has gone out of my head. Um, oh, no. What's the two-player worker placement game? Um... With, in the desert, there's actually camels in this game, but it has nothing to do with that. Um, oh, it, oh, oh, uh, Andreas uh, Targi. You're talking about Targi. I'm talking about Targi, yes. And the designer is... And I is, think that's Andreas, is it Stedding? It's Andre, er, Andreas Steiger. 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 Yes, Andreas Stedding is Mr. Hansen Jutanka. And I, so think, many, uh, I think he he should make more games because he's that's such a phenomenally good two-player game. Uh, yes, that is that would probably be the number one. I love Targi to death, and Targi the expansion is fantastic. Uh, it literally improves upon perfection, and I so don't know. Maybe that's all he's got in. Might, maybe he's ready to walk away. Maybe he just wanted to to dunk on the entire industry and then just you know bask in. I think all you the and I might disagree deserves. on the expansion. I think. I, I really what? like no, no, listen, I really, really like the expansion. Yeah. It's just that after having played it, I said, I don't know that I have played Targi enough to need the expansion. The expansion mm. feels like, for me, the, the analogy would be Ticket to Ride Europe to Ticket to Ride. Very different, but they're both Ticket to Ride. This is like another map of sorts for Targi. I would say that's a comparable in, in the same way Ticket to Ride adds, what was it, tunnels? This adds the Water. dunes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, oh, okay, that's, that's true. Thing. I you really do like the it. dunes. I love the dunes. I think I'm turning you around then. Would you want to play this game now without dunes? I don't know. Can you add the dunes in without adding in anything else? Yeah, you have to because of the water. Yeah, exactly. I guess you could probably take the water-specific duned cards out and because there's a bunch of them. Yeah, there might be too many. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, oh, yeah, it would upset the balance. But, yeah, I mean, those dunes are phenomenal. And the thing, I one of the things I love about Targi is just how incredibly tight and constricting it is. I mean, you do so much with so little, and everything is a struggle. And I thought, oh, having water and being able to, it's a wild card. I can convert it two to, two to one and three to one into the most important things. I thought that would kind of rob the game of some of that tension. But it really doesn't. You just become incredibly tense for water. It just adds more tension and um, you know more to struggle over. Ah, man, that game is so just flawless. 
And I completely agree. Andreas Steiger is easily number one on this list. The world needs more. All right, you got something else? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Because I got <clears> another <throat> one, but I don't want to. I don't want to dominate this list. All right. Uh, well, I don't. I don't remember how you feel about Homesteaders from Alex Rockwell. I, I thought that I have. I've cooled on it. That doesn't mean I don't think it's a bad game. It's just mm -hmm. that I've cooled on it. Ah. I think it's fantastic, you know, incredibly satisfying, uh, you know, engine building game, starting out with nothing, making, you know, a massive American West City, and still to this day, uh, one of the best two-player auction implementations I've ever seen. And as I understand, I think Alex Roxwell, he was a college student when he designed that, and it was published by TMG, and TMG was after him for years and years say come back we want to do an expansion people want to see it i certainly wanted to see it and he just just kind of disappeared he went howard hughes on him i guess and eventually they got another great designer to make the expansion which really makes it even better but i and it's where you know and alex used to be incredibly prolific he was a huge poster on board game geek so he was really involved and i hope he's okay now that i think about it but I mean, I love Homesteaders so much. So you're giving it a provisional in case something else. Um, but I, I, I would love to see him do something because he Homesteaders last is logged in the board game geek on May 16th. So he must check in a case of this year. Yes. OK, so he's just got he's running silent. He is. You're right, though. He used to be extremely, very, very involved in board game geek. I recognize the name from board game geek before I recognize it from him as a designer. You would recognize his avatar. I think it was uh, not it was, Boromir. It was Aragorn. Aragorn. I mean, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Alex, if you're out there somewhere, come back, baby. Some of us miss you. Alrighty. Oh, you know what? I, I really do need to uh, put up the question here at the top. But meanwhile, why? Oh yes, we, there we go. What are we talking about? That's true. For people who are coming in, we're talking about our top five designers who need to make more board games um but anyhow uh the next one that i would like to promote yeah. would be sophie wagner is it sophie or sophia i think oh, it's sophia. sophia i'm sorry sophia sophia wagner sorry that's yes. what happens when although I i'm sure screen. her friends call her sophie i don't know how that works yeah in germany i think she's german if i recall correctly you're right i mean yeah she had a really what was it it was i know the second one I can't remember the names of them. Okay, my, my, my favorite clouds. that she's made is the boldest, but the one that you're probably thinking of that's higher rated is Noria. Yes, uh, yeah, Noria, and followed by the boldest. I we like the boldest a lot. I really, that I'm was, telling you that that bugs me that that game does not get more more buzz. I think it's I, really I really agree. good. That is really flying under the radar for some reason. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's got fan, phenomenal presentation, very cool theme, really sharp gameplay, really great replayability. Um, and it's and it feels know. different than everything else, right? It doesn't feel like a typical deck builder, because not really a deck Both builder. Both of her games do. Yeah, Noria, well, yes. Noria has a... And they're both really cool themes, too. Like, they're out-of-this-world weird themes. Yeah, yeah. Um, she won... The Spiel des Jahres Fellowship, it says, in 2015. I don't know what And for. I think that was for Noria. I, um, and as I understand it, I liked the core mechanisms of Noria a lot, but I felt that they drove a game that was a little limited because at the end of the game, at the end of the day, all the cool action selection you do with that, that wheel thing and all that is basically just commodities, uh, you know, investing and you know and, and trying to determine what's going to you know buy low sell high kind of stuff and as i understand it her original design was much richer and had a lot more stuff going on and the publisher sculpted it and streamlined it down to where okay cool mechanism driving a stock market game with a neat theme and i would love to see i would love to see her original bolder more ambitious design but yeah i would love to see a boldest too and i would love to see anything she's got that is a phenomenal suggestion sir <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> i would doff my cap if i had one all right what do you got um i don't know yeah i i don't think uh, oh 
No. Yes. No. No. I'm not going to do it. Um. No, I'm not. I, I don't know what you're there. arguing with yourself about. <laughs> I could say, no, I'm not going to do it. Let's let, let, let's. I'll, I'll go for a different one. Um, I don't know if you have you played Subdivision, which was from. Oh, Bezier. I don't remember. I'll have to look it up. Or you can look it up. Oh, um, I believe Subdivision, Subdivision was a sequel Lucas to Suburbia. Hedgren. Lucas had. Grown. Thank you. And I believe Lucas was a tester or he was in some way involved in the development of Suburbia, which, of course, is a monstrously popular, very well loved SimCity building game from. Um, oh yeah, my God, Subdivision I did not. Sub, uh, uh, Ted Osbuck. Um, Ted Osbuck, thank you. Subdivision, Subdivision did not take off very well, though. No, it did not. And I think it's because everybody expected, oh, we want another Suburbia. Um, and Subdivision was a very, it was the same setting, but a very, very different game. But uh, it is one of my favorite di tile layers of all time. It's so brilliant uh, because it does what I was talking about with Tar Targi earlier. It puts such incredibly harsh, restrictive shackles on you. It's a tile -like game where at the beginning of every round, we roll a die, and that die, it's a zoning die that determines where can we actually build as we're building our little suburb here. And you're like, die? That is not what I wanted to build now. And if you want, you can sacrifice resources to basically break the zoning ordinance and then build wherever you want. But it's but that is such a brilliant system. Plus, it's a very good tile drafting game. We talked about card drafting games a few weeks ago. I should have mentioned this because tile drafting game uh, is a tile I don't build that I have to hand off to you. Okay, well, you know what? I wanted to build this. The die, I, I, the zoning side, I couldn't. And then I hand it to you. And then the die goes your way and you can build that. I was going to build that school, and now I'll never see it again. Really sharp game. and um, You like I don't it know, a uh, lot more it, than it, I do. I think it's a fine game, but wow, you like it. Oh, man, we love it. We love it more than Suburbia, which I think is a slight bit of heresy um, for most geeks. Yep, there we go. All right. You dropped it. What about Susan McKinley yeah. Ross? She's known for one game and one game only. I mean, she's made 22 games, although four of them are very similar. Um, and that's Quirkle. Oh. So Quirkle yeah. from 2006, very, very popular game about laying blocks and colors. And uh, I mean, it's it's only it's ranked at 771, which is kind of low, but it's it's done extremely well. A great gateway game. Yeah. And for good reason. Quirkle it's cubes a, and Quirkle it's cards. It's a flawless game. There's a lot of really cool things. And... She has done a lot of kids' games, too, which are great. You know, I'd love to see her design some more adult games. Um, yeah. Just to clarify, when I say adult, I mean games for adults, not dirty humor <laughs> games. I never understood why that became synonymous with adult. Yeah. Because most adult um, games, the people who buy them are teenagers. You know, I've got another one. Although I, I hate to say I have no idea how to pronounce his name. Um, let's see. I'm going to look it up here. Tribute right. uh, it's it, it's it's basically the, the uh, largely the designer of Roll Through the Gal Roll for the Galaxy. Uh, Wei Hua Wang. Oh, oh, oh Wei Hua. Um, Yo, do you know him? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, well, he's a really nice guy, uh, and he has been working with Tom for years. He is more of a developer than a designer. He has actually developed many of the yeah. expansions for Race for the Galaxy. He's also one of the smartest people I know, like, period. Very, very intelligent person. Really, really smart. Great at puzzles, escape rooms, things like that. These are all skills I would like to see him uh, exert in a creative fashion, considering how amazing Roll is. I mean, Roll is in, my, is in Jen's top 10. It's in my top 20. And um, and you're right. I mean, it's not like we're not getting a lot of other good stuff from him. But I want his name front and center on the box. If if another game comes where he is listed as the lead, I will knock anybody out of the way to get it because I he <laughs> made something so special and so one of a kind. I can see, I can see the game comes out of come on, get out of my way, fool! Ron is coming through, ready to grab it. Um, on this note, folks. For those who are watching, uh, Mr. Rado is having some very strong internet connections. And so it will sometimes disconnect and reconnect. And um, hopefully we'll keep streaming 
meanwhile. For once, my internet's working well, which is a rarity. So we're going to keep trying to get him on hold there. Am I back? You are back. I just warned everybody and told them what was happening about that. And nowhere in there did I say anything about all oh, your opinions were wrong. Um, <laughs> Comcast! No, that's actually a true statement. I was What I said, everything I just said was very true. Um, yep. Okay, we're at six people, so we got to cut one. All right, so we got... Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was happy with this list already, so... Let, Andrew let's, Steiger, let's, let's, uh... Alex Rockwell, Sophie Wagner... Lucas Hedgren, Susan McKinley Ross, and Wei Hua Huang. You know what? Even though I suggested it, I'm going to drop Alex off that list. Okay. Easy because enough. I don't think he wants to come back, quite frankly. I'm sure he'd just rather be left alone. <laughs> I feel like you're taunting him now, like, oh, yeah, I bet you can't make a game. <laughs> yeah, bring it, Alex. Come at me, bro. <laughs> All righty. Well, there you go. And, I, and again, I understand for people who are watching this, there is – Many, many designers who could make more good games. A lot oh of Oh my them. gosh, yes, yes, yes. And there are also a few people we didn't mention because we know they're about to make a bunch of games. That would be, for example, Elizabeth Hargrave. She is definitely coming out with more games on the horizon. So, Have you played Mariposas yet? No. Have you? I No, I have not. I, I haven't heard from AEG yet, but I'm uh, checking my mailbox every day. Uh, <laughs> you're not the only one. I'm like, well, I, I'm looking for it. Like, I want to see a butterfly. Give me a butterfly. <laughs> All right, folks, it's time for questions. If you have questions, we have, well, we yeah, got something. Don't finish that sentence. So Don't write a check that we can't cash. <laughs> Someone wrote, Rado's back this time. It's personal. <laughs> yeah, so do you like roll better than race? Yes. Um, and, and that's nothing against race. Race is brilliant. Um, but... I like I, one of the big reasons I take role over race is two player implementation. I think the the race where you're, you're effectively you have two hands of all the action cards. No, no, it you works. Don't. It's very deep, but it's a lot. You don't have lot. two hands. You just have two extra cards. That's all. Oh, is that? I forget. I mean, yeah. I actually, it's been a while since I've done it. I actually prefer it with two. All right. First question: Have you ever ridden a camel? Red. red oh yes, yes. Oh well, then you're ahead of me because I have not. Did you like it? Um, yeah, I've ridden a camel. Um, my wife and I uh, did a sand dunes camel sleep in the uh, uh, you know in, in the desert outside of Marrakesh uh, years ago, and it was a lot of fun. And the camels, I enjoyed riding a camel more than the one time I rode a horse, because I find Tom horses move at two speeds, boring and painful, and I didn't care for it. All right, someone says a bunch of people want you to do a top campaign games after your legacy list, which I did last week. And Richard, could we do a top campaign games someday? That's would, an excellent uh, list. I would consider doing it at some point. I, I I would have to sit and think about it a lot because there's a lot of campaign games. No. Oh, no, I'm mean, honestly, I think that's too good a topic for this show, quite frankly. No, 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 that's what they're asking. They want you to make your own top campaign I agree, yeah. Because, I mean, unlike you... I have not played every single legacy game that's out there. I've only uh, played 14 of the 15. No. Yeah, I mean, well, a lot of them don't support two players. You know, that's risk true. and and betrayal and the dilemma and all that. So I, I don't think I can actually even hit the 10. But you would just yeah, like I love the, campaign uh, the, play. The, the, the oh my gosh, I love that idea. Whoever suggested that, good on you, mate. I think you might have determined my future. I'm literally going to write that down now so I don't forget. William says, do you ever experience periods of gaming burnout? Not yet. Um, I think I might if it wasn't for the fact that my fundamental um, valve is my wife. Because if I'm not playing with her, I'm not playing. And she can be susceptible to burnout. And she, there are days she's like, uh, not today. Anything but games today. Uh, I got to go anything other than that. Can we just go walk the dogs? Can we go out? Can we do chores? And I'm like, but it's my job. Let's go play some games. I'll never be tired of that. And she's like, I'm kind of tired of it. So uh, I have a built-in safety valve for that. I don't know about you, though. No, I'm fine. I, I don't know that I, if I ever get tired of playing games, I just take a day off in the sense of play video games or something else, right? Um, and I don't play tons of games on, like, Sundays. Oh, now I do. But that's because of the quarantine. Um, yeah, I, uh, I do occasionally get 
periods of gaming internet burnout, um, that occasionally happens. It's very rare, but sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm done with Facebook slash Twitter slash BGG ah. slash, uh, and I might take a day off from that, but that's about it. Yep. Um, <laughs> Kabuki kids said they don't have time for burnout. Maybe. <sighs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Could you play Werewolf Legacy with your online group? I I, I don't think I could because, uh, from what I understand, some of the things in Werewolf Legacy um, require it to be in person. Also, Roy has played Werewolf Legacy, and he told me after playing all the different weird rules and stuff I did with Legacy that, I mean, with normal Werewolf, to go back, Werewolf Legacy would seem like a too easy for me at that point. Oh. All right, folks, we need more questions. I actually don't have many questions here. People what are actually, the? I know they're responding to, well, some of the questions we get are, are ones we get all the time. Both of us have FAQs for that reason. Oh, yes. And don't ask us what top tens we're going to do in top fives. Give us like an actual question we can answer right now on the show. Um, so things like that. Uh, yeah, don't make us go back to talk about chaining. We got nothing. <laughs> Chaining. That well is dry. Well, there's actually, someone mentioned there's actually two types of chaining. There's the chaining where you can chain a card and this card and that card. I don't know what that's called. Um, Jeff would probably I have I would have some... called that combo. That's co that's card combo gameplay, isn't it? Although, well, no, I guess. some people call it that way. Yeah. Okay, we're not getting any. Oh, okay, this is a good question. David says, why do you think Pendulum has been so divisive? People are claiming it would be a plain worker placement without the time, but the engine building seemed interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think no, Pendulum's I'll, I'll divisive. I think Pendulum's divisive just because Stonemaier games are so popular, and so his games are so popular, and he is a master of marketing his games. A master. He actually yeah. gets people to pay him money to buy his games early. I, I don't. That's amazing to me. And so because he does that, people there's a obviously a subset of people who want his games to not be good. That's just anytime someone's successful, that's what happens. Yeah. So the people who want his games not to be good, and then there's people who really rabidly love him, and then those two groups collide, and you know you have your thing. He also has the most popular game from 2019. It's his wingspan. It's not even yeah. a question. It's the most popular game, and so then of course this is the next game. At, well, actually, ta it's after Tapestry, but Tapestry got such huge buzz. Now we have another game, and then the other reason it's divisive. It uses timers, and some people love timers, and some people hate timers. That is pretty thorough. I'm trying to think if I can add anything. Well, to I th that. was that neutral enough too? I feel like I'm I'm trying to get both sides of it. You know, I'm not. I'm yeah, not I mean, no, I mean, any honestly, side. I think I probably would have been a bit more divisive in my response. In that, you know what? <laughs> there are people on the internet who just aren't happy unless they see people burn, unless they see things. Well, that's fail. true. That's true. Um, I do think that those people, though, occasionally butt heads with people who can't ever find fault with anything if they like it. You Indeed. know, yes. I, I run into that every time. I, if I ever do a negative review on a game that someone loves, whew, it's like I shot their dog. Yeah, I mean, if if uh, uh, Pendulum had been announced by Ted Allspock and Bezier Games, it would have been, oh, that's just the next game coming. And I, I don't think there would have been anywhere near as much as the Sturm and Drang. Um, I, I think it's less about the game and more about the history uh, around that publisher. And around Jamie himself. All right, here's an interesting question. What would be the best location for a picnic? Like the beach or mountains, etc. Uh, uh, um, I would always I, I would always probably try to go for well, I'm just thinking of the best picnics I've ever had, and they have been at city parks, quite frankly. <laughs> Oh, man, you took my answer. I was going to say in the most urbanized place I could find. <laughs> um, but uh, beaches, I, I hate picnics at the beach because the sand. It gets everywhere, and I'm not trying to repeat Anakin Skywalker's statement. But you here. did. I. It's coarse. It's rough. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not trying to pick up somebody with that line. I, just, I, just, <laughs> I hear it works I, in a galaxy far, <laughs> far away. I just find that sand's annoying. We live so close to the beach here. And I think we've been to the beach in the last 10 years. We've been there maybe five times. <laughs> it's just, it, it, we're like, why go to the beach when there's that beautiful pool right there? And I would rather go to a lake or, you know, a, 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 a slow moving river or something like that, or a water park, yeah. preferably. Uh, yep. 
So that's mountains is fine. It just seems like a lot of work to get there. I would if if, if you can't pick like a city park like Rado did, I would say a a meadow would be yeah. my my thing. A meadow with trees, so that I yeah. would have some shade. Yep. I mean, I'll, I, and and that was kind of my that's that's the direction I was going towards. Um, but then I realized convenience. Uh, you know, yes, it's it's nice to sit down and, and shut out the world, and it's just about this moment here, you know, within the confines of this blanket, and we're in one with nature. But boy, it's really nice to be able to get up and go around the corner and get a Slim Jim at the 7-Eleven or whatever it might be. Not that I'm saying that's what I need to make the perfect. Uh, it's just the first thing that popped into my head. I want uh, Slim Jim now. And and I, and we don't have to you know traipse for three hours. It's just how we got to go down to the parking lot. And yeah, convenient. I mean, if it's not convenient. Uh, uh, that, that's going to be a big downer for me. Gallant says, in the future of board games, have you heard of anything people are working on or that is coming that you feel will completely change the hobby? That would have to be Tom. I, I do not have my finger on the pulse. Uh, well, I don't know that I've... Some of us have played Pandemic Legacy Zero and some of us haven't. So I will defer to my... No, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I don't think that changes it any more than... I mean, that's a nice... No, I'm sure. It's a nice doing of Legacy, but it's not like... it. I mean, Legacy was interesting. Even though Legacy, I would still argue, you know, people are like, how many Legacy games are... There's too many Legacy games. There's 14... Or there's 15 you of them, it. folks. Yeah. Yeah, so... There's not too many. 15 in, uh, I think, eight years is not a lot. Yep. Um, I think the thing that got me most, hmm, was not a game, but Plat Hat it's, just announced they're bringing on. back Ashes. Oh. Right? Okay. okay. No big deal. They're bringing back Ashes. But they're working with Covenant. That's a game store slash video site. They do a lot of fantasy yep. flight things. And it's a subscribe model. You will mm -hmm. subscribe. You, they're, they're taking pre-orders. I think they need a 1,000 of them. And once they get a 1,000, they're going to start sending them out to people. And if there's one humongous change to this hobby, it's happening right now. And I don't think people are realizing it because they're looking at the hobby uh, as right now as a temporary thing. Yes. But I think when the quarantine is lifted and, you know, Lord willing, hopefully it will be lifted at some point, you know, I think... We're still going to see fundamental changes in the hobby. We're going to see more people going online for gaming, for good or for worse. You know, there's been this local game store versus online game store. And one of the big things that people have pushed is they're like, hey, people get into the hobby because of the local game store. Well, not right now. No. And the hobby is actually growing without the local game stores. Now, before everyone jumps in my throat, I'm not anti-local game stores. But what I'm saying is, People are finding ways around it. They're finding ways to sell games at online conventions. They're finding ways to sell games. The publishers are finding ways to sell games themselves. They're finding ways to advertise and sell their games online. And this Plat Hat doing a subscription model through a store. I think we're going to see a lot of changes in how Kickstarters are run or yeah. pseudo Kickstarters, like what's going on with Pendulum is a pseudo Kickstarter, right? It's a pre-order. Yeah, that's but an it's, interesting way to look at it, yeah. But it's very similar to a Kickstarter, you know, and how that works. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going to see more and more of that in the future, even after the quarantine is over. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we will still have friendly local game stores, but we will have lost a lot of them. And they're probably going to morph more into friendly local mega game stores. Right. But or, and I think they're, we'll, they're I think we'll lose all the non-friendly games At Target and Walmart as well. So, you know, they're not only getting squeezed by the fact that we, uh, you know, can't go and browse the shelves anymore. I mean, the squeeze is just going to continue. And that's true for all retail outlets. No one can compete with Amazon at the end of the day. And, uh, yeah, that's that's definitely something that's happening. For a more upbeat one, though, I did think of one. Well, I think that's, I mean, it's, I don't know that's necessarily a downbeat. It's just a change. It's kind of like yes. cars replacing horses. It's not necessarily, I mean, it's not good for the horses, but it's, and again, I'm not saying local game stores are horses. I'm just saying I better get yeah, it's, it's inevitable my foot change, in my mouth. and um, yeah, and things will be different, and we will lose some things, we will gain some things. Uh, my more positive one was uh, I thought is what you were going to say. I forget what it's called. Is it called Tabula? It's the it's that digital board game table from Cool Mini or not? Oh yeah, but I haven't heard anything about it. Um, yeah. See, I don't think that itself is going to change the industry, but I do believe it is a harbinger for where we will ultimately be 
in a couple of decades. Taburo. Um, I think, yeah, they announced it a year ago. Yeah. I think. And you had seen it a year before that. Yeah, you're right. I had. I've seen it almost two years ago now. I feel like when that, someone's going to make the magic bullet. It, yeah. it reminds me of um, TV phones. I don't remember in the 80s and 90s, everyone was talking about, we'll talk to each other on TV. And I said, we have the technology. Why is no one doing this? And it was a, yeah. it was a uh, first adapter thing. If you buy a TV phone, there was no one to talk to. You know? um, <laughs> but once the smartphone came out, it made it possible. And then people FaceTime and talk through or Skype. We do this all the time. We're talking right now. But it just there needed to be that thing that made it possible. Yep. And I think that's the way it is with these tables. They keep coming out with a new one. We've seen touchscreen tables. We've seen this. And none of them have yet taken on. But I think at, at some point, one of them is going to go yep. and yep. blow up. Yep, there will be a critical mass. It will change the what we think of as board gaming. But it's a ways off. Who's my favorite Slay the Spire character? Have you played Slay the Spire? you got to play it. No. It's so good. So good. You would love it. I mean, I... D really? Slay the Spire, I have spent more time playing it than any other app. Oh, it's a video game. Oh, okay. Well, it's a deck building. It's a deck building fantasy, Final Fantasy style game. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Like, amazing. It is so good, and it is super addictive. And my favorite character is the Forsaken, I think they're called, the one with the orbs. Um, oh, you know what? Yes, I have seen video of this. So... That's my indication of how big a deal it's become is that somehow it is trickled through to my very passive, slight peripheral awareness. So that means it's gigantic. That means it's Fortnite big, if I've noticed it. It's, well, it's getting out there. It just came out on the Switch, but it's also on the iPad. It's in a lot of things. But it is by far, it is, I gave it a 10 out of 10. I, wow. I have, I played it last night. I played it, actually, did I play it this morning? I did play it this morning. I need to stop playing it. All right. Where's the physical version? No, this one can't be physical. That's what's cool work. about it. It's one of those games, like cards can permanently change in your deck. Mm -hmm. So they have different things in it, which are, you know, it's not putting down the board game, the actual physical thing. It's just that stuff can't be It done. is taking advantage of its digital platform in a way that analog can't really compete with. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. What's your favorite silent movie? Oy. Do I even have one? I'm, I'm trying to think of a silent movie. I think some of the Laurel and Hardy movies. Well, I mean, obviously, it's going to be Charlie Chaplin stuff or Buster Keaton stuff um, is, is an easy go-to for that. But I'll be honest, I'm aware. You know, I, I've seen a lot of them. I, I took some film appreciation film history classes when I was in college. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a talky guy. <laughs> I would never have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think these talkies, I don't think it's a passing fad. I think it's here to stay. I think the kids like the color as well. You know what? I'll, I'll give it to Metropolis. Which is, um, you know, it's the famous, uh, you know, dystopic. It's, it's the one with the with the, the female robot that a woman transforms into a robot from Fritz Lang, I think. And, you know, it's, it's really visually stunning and you know it was a, a very very big important milestone and development of movies as a visual medium um so i'd go with that but that's mostly because i did take some film history and appreciate or one film history and appreciation class in college if it weren't for that i don't think i would have had anything hmm all right who's your favorite classic pro wrestler I'm just asking the questions now. This is uh, that's this is probably a question better served on the Weekly Owl Boom, quite frankly. I think <laughs> that's true. That's true. Lance you would get a huge this. debate there. Um, I'm going to say Andre the Giant. Oh, that's a good one. But that's because of Princess Bride. Oh, that's a good reason. That's yep. a good reason. Uh, I'll pick Princess the, Bride. Uh, wouldn't have been the same without him. I'll pick uh, Big Boss Man. All right. All right. <laughs> well, this is Tom loves the prequels confirmed. I, that, that's not what I said per se. I just said that line. I can't mention. Sam I will now. confirm that I love the prequels. For the record, oh. I'm happy to go down that rabbit hole. Well, and I have. We don't have enough time to go down that rabbit hole today. I agree with much of what you say, and your very long 
long, long, long posts on the subject. And I disagree with much of what you say also. I do think we both agree on our liking of episode eight. So mm, excellent. Um, I, that's a good start. Um, me and my children have argued over episode nine quite a bit, actually. So really, well, they like it, they like it just fine because they don't have any they don't have any baggage. So they just went yeah. into it and they said that was a lot of fun. And I said, but what about? And they were like, shut up, dad. Yeah, you're you're you're, you're old, dad. My but speaking of old. Last month, uh, my wife was gone for a while, and so my mom and I, who lives with us, uh, we took the opportunity to watch all, what is it, 11 movies, you know, so including Rogue and, and Solo, sequentially, night after night after night after night, because she had only Ooh. seen the original trilogy once when it was in theaters a million years ago, and so she everything was new to her. We watched them in chronological order from start to finish, and at the end of all of it, her two favorites were Phantom Menace and Rise of Skywalker. Really? Yes. Huh. She liked the beginning. She liked the end. Um, her Probably her least favorite was Empire. She literally fell asleep during Empire. <laughs> Your mom's like the opposite of a Star Wars fanboy. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All righty. Um, here's a philosophical question. Do you think playing board games have changed your mindset and the way that you're thinking about solving problems? I think so. That's a really insightful question that I've never given any thought to. But I think I am probably a more logical and organized thinker than I was prior to really diving into board gaming. I think my wife has always been this way, and it's why she found herself so instantly falling in love with it. Um, I mean, because it gives her uh, the opportunity to exercise those muscles without the stress of our real-world finances or what have you. But, yeah, for me, I think 100%. I am more logical and orderly. I, I think things through in terms of connective tissue and X leads to Y more as a result of becoming a diehard board gamer. I might argue that board gaming has made me a better person in accepting other people. Ooh. Because that is required in board games. You need sure. to get along with everyone at your table. You can't just stand up and walk away. Well, you can, but that's considered to be awfully gauche. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You'll have fewer and fewer tables to sit at if you keep doing that. Right. Uh, and also you learning to work with gamers and game and people who like games that I don't like, maybe like an 18 XX game or a heavy war game or what have you. And working with them has made me think about working with people in general. And when where things where the differences that we might have matter more. Hmm. That is interesting. That's a good point. If I, I think I might have some, some more response to that if I played more with anybody other than Jen. Because I could certainly see one's ability to see the world from another perspective. Yeah, that's certainly something that games teach, is think about it from their perspective. Why? Because if you don't, you might lose. So look at the world. Think of, Stop and think about what it would be like if you had a different set of cards in your hand. And that's a really valuable skill. That's really, I like that question. What's your favorite die to roll? D12. Um, it's not even a question. D12 is my favorite. And that's that, why that's, I buy that's the, the... That's the nugget one, right? Yeah. That's why I buy the double D6s. Because I can replace D6 in games with them. Um, I, I think, actually, strictly speaking, you're right. I think you could almost make an objective argument. Because it's not... It's, it's not like the 20 where, okay, what face did it actually land on? I don't know. That's a ridiculous thing. Um, but it has really great motion. Uh, it really feels like it's properly randomized. Um, but I'll always go back to the six because I love everything about D6s because almost because of our humanity's cultural heritage. I mean, every time I see some ancient six-sided die that they dug up in Mesopotamia or wherever, and I think, wow, these have been with us for so long. Uh, it just it, it just warms the cockles of my heart. And so I, I love D6s for anything. Even though I do agree, a D12 is arguably the objective rolling experience. <laughs> All right, Cora Lou says, do you think some people who discovered games during the quarantine will be unable to game in the future due to associating gaming with the pandemic? 
I think people are pretty resilient. I think so I, too. Yeah. I think if, if nothing else, the fact that pandemic is selling more during this time frame has yeah. blown my mind. I really expected there to be a backlash against it. And people are kind of like, well, you know, and they and they move on. So hmm. Do, do yep. you think GameStop stores should pivot to selling more board games? Yes, they are. I think they are doing that already. They're, they're doing it to some degree. I don't think GameStop's going to survive, so I don't really care. I, I think GameStop was already hit with the punch of, you know, the people digital being able downloads. to go to Steam and digital downloads. Yeah. Then the the cor- coronavirus uh, combined with their somewhat shady, <laughs> we're an essential in, <laughs> business. In, uh, because oh, we, my gosh. Because yeah. we want to sell they're Animal Crossing. <laughs> However... I do know the one thing GameStop does, which is very convenient to a lot of people, it is the one place to buy and sell used games. That's like a big thing that a lot of people use it for. Yeah, but um, that's the, and that's the thing. Digital distribution completely subverts that. I haven't bought a physical board game in years. I just download them all. Exactly, um, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, the main reason to go into a GameStop these days, as far as I know, is to pick up those little... Hey, um, buy this with physical money so you can type the number in and download the game when you get home because you don't have a credit card. Yeah, that's true. I can see that happening. Oh, uh, let's see here. People are now talking about D one hundreds. They're great, but they just they're hard to read. Um, <sighs> now they're talking about Slay the Spire. <laughs> um, now they're talking about Metropolis. Um, then I guess I got it right. Well. Um, people are now talking about Under the Giant. Um, have you been watching? So far, I'm winning the audience, it sounds like. Um, is there any new TV series you've been watching? Any which series? New TV series. <sighs> yeah. Um, I really like Brave New World. Uh, I, I read I read the novel when I was a kid, and I dimly remember it, but I've really uh, thought that it's great how wonderfully it's shot and how well they've modernized the story and made it relevant for which, today. Which one is that on? Brave New World is on Hulu, if I recall correctly. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, although it is it is not family-friendly at all. The original book was not, um, because it's basically, oh, the future is perfect because everybody is uh, in an orgy all the time. And the show does not shy away from that. Uh, but, um, oh, and Perry Mason just ended last night. And I have never really been into police procedurals, legal stuff, you know, law and order, CSI. Th- none of those things have ever drawn me in. But I gave it a try because it was an HBO show. And, you know, that's always prestige stuff. And that was the most stunningly gorgeous looking show I have seen the cinematography, I mean, there were many times I would just pause and just look at the frame and, you know, how beautifully it was composed. And then it was a really compelling and interesting story, too, largely because, if I recall correctly, it's eight episodes long and it's, it's one mystery. It's one Kate, course, Kate, throughout the whole thing. But they just come right out and tell you right at the beginning, oh, yeah, here, here's the guy who did it. And um, so it's less about the procedure and more about the people. And so I found it really compelling. And. I, I'm countering what I just said about not looking like procedurals. I just finished Unbelievable, which was an incredibly harrowing and um, somber, again, another police procedural about a real-life story of two female police detectives who investigate a series of rapes in the Pacific Northwest, or in the, in the American West, and it's, it's important to watch. I understand now, Barack Obama listed it uh, in at the end of 2019 as one of the most important things he had seen that year. And I, I do think it is. I, I think it's incredibly eye opening. Um, it, it's hard to watch. It's it's but it's it's uh, inspiring, too. All right, folks, don't forget, you can enter uh, our, oh, hey. the contest um, so you can win a copy of Climate Crisis delivered to you near the end of this year. And all you have to do is email us at contest at dicetower.com. Put the word climate in the uh, title and in the description say, what are some of the things that happen from climate change? Some people were saying, well, what are you looking for? They actually list those on the Kickstarter page, which is linked below. And you can go check that out. Yep. All right. We'll see you again in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. And two weeks. Yes, two weeks. Two weeks. I am literally, Alexa, remind me in (laughs) um, 13 days to corner to corner. Uh, should I remind you? Uh, nine a.m. 
Uh, we live in the future, Tom. We live in the future. We do. I'll be all mess next in, in two weeks. I'll be losing another daughter, but that's okay. Um, I'll, we'll see you all next time. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Richard Rodoham. Have fun gaming. Bye.